I'm here with the wrap up from my October reading theme, which was spooky books, which I didn't really do a very good job of doing. <laughs> I kind of strayed from my TBR a little bit. So we'll talk about the books that I read. So the first book that I read was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. And this book was delightful. I really enjoyed it. If you're not aware, Coraline is a story about a girl who moves into this old mansion, basically, that's been turned into apartments. And her parents are very involved in their work. And they don't really pay as much attention to her as she would like. And she gets bored and finds a door in one of the rooms in their apartment that leads to, like, an alternate version of her apartment. And the people in this alternate world have button eyes. But she likes her parents better in this world because they, you know, pay more attention to her and want to have fun with her and stuff. Uh, but they also want to keep her forever and sew buttons into her eyes. So she's like, no, thank you. Um, but then it ends up becoming, like, this quest to free the souls of the other kids this has happened to and also find her parents because her parents go missing. So it's really short, um, but it's spooky and fun. Good read. <laughs> and then I started reading The School for Good and Evil. And I'm not sure I want to continue it, to be honest, which it's not a bad book at all. Um, it's actually well written and I feel like it's going to have some great lessons in it. It's just not what I was expecting, which is... Comp I'm going to sneeze it's just not what I was expecting, which is completely 100% my fault because it absolutely says 100% what it's about without anything misleading in the synopsis. I just have never read the synopsis until I started reading it. <laughs> I had heard brief discussions about it on booktube when it first came out and I actually ordered it through like this thing at my work where you get points for doing a good job and stuff and you can buy stuff with it. And I used my points to buy this book, which did not have the synopsis. It just had the cover and the title. I had heard of it and I ordered it. So for some reason, out of just the little things I had heard about it without reading the synopsis, I thought this was about like a witch slash wizard school that everybody goes to, um, or like everyone who's a witch or a wizard goes to, kind of like Harry Potter, but that there was a school for like dark arts and regular arts. <laughs> And that both were, like, acceptable places to go and learn for some reason. And that it was about one girl who truly wanted to go to, like, the good witch school. And a girl who wanted to go to the evil witch school. And they got accepted to opposite ones. And they were having to learn, like, you know, evil witchcraft and stuff. Uh, and it's not about that at all. <laughs> so it's actually about... The people who create fairy tales, going to these schools for good and evil is how fairy tales are created. So people get accepted to go to the good school where you learn to be princes and princesses. And people get accepted to go to the bad school where they learn how to become villains. <laughs> and then, depending on how well you do in the school, you'll either get to become a villain or a prince or a princess. Um, or if you don't do well, then you will become like a tree or a frog. Or something stupid. And then, basically, there's this, like, all-knowing writer thing that writes what happens to these people in this school. And then a fairy tale comes out of it. And that is how fairy tales are written. It's, like, based on the real stories of people who go to these fairy tale schools. Which is, like, a kind of cool concept. But I am not into fairy tale stuff. Like, I like the fairy tale things that, like, I watched when I was a kid for, like, nostalgic reasons, but I'm not the biggest fan of fairy tale retellings. Like, there's a few that I've read that I enjoy, but it's not something that really interests me. I don't jump at reading these types of stories. And on top of that, it's a fairy tale story that is written for younger children. Like, this is for 10-year-olds. The girl who's always wanted to go to the princess school goes to the villain school, and the girl who doesn't want to go to either... She doesn't want to go to in either of these schools, goes to the princess school, but at first glance, people would think that she's a villain and she should be in the villain school. And I feel like there's really good lessons in it, and it's, like, already, um, just because of the way the, the princess girl acts, who's been accepted to the evil villain school. Um, it just is not my jam. It's not something that I am really interested in reading. There's nothing wrong with the book. It's well written. I've read almost half of it. I'm just not sure if I want to finish it. Hey, bud. So you guys can let me know uh, if you think I should finish it. I don't know when I will, maybe in the new year or something, uh, when I feel like I have a little bit more time. Um, because it's not, again, it's not a bad book. There's nothing wrong with it. It's well written. I just, it's not something that I am really that interested in. So anyway, that's what happened with this book. <laughs> 
And then I read Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab in less than 24 hours. So that was fantastic. <laughs> this is the third book in the Cassidy Blake. Is that what it's called? Trilogy? Series? I think it's called the Cassidy Blake series. I'm not sure. It's This is also middle grade. This is middle grade horror. So this is a spooky book that I read. I thought School of Good and Evil was going to at least have evil witches, but it it was fairy tale villains. It's not the same. <laughs> but this had ghosts in it. So it's like got nice spooky atmospheric vibes, but not spooky enough to actually scare me because it's for 10 year olds. You know what I mean? And this series is about a girl who can see ghosts because she's had a near death experience and her best friend is a ghost and her parents are the hosts of this like, not really a ghost hunting show, but like, um, a spooky haunted places documentary type show. And so each book is about them traveling to a new spooky, cool, atmospheric location to film a new episode for her parents' show. And then she gets into ghostly shenanigans. So I really enjoyed this. It was excellent. I feel like she could just keep writing books in this series because they're, they're not quite standalones, but like they kind of work as standalones. Like it's a new story every time with just a little bit of uh, continuing information. And I feel like she could just write a whole bunch of these if she wanted and I would read them all. <laughs> Now, while I was in Ottawa for Thanksgiving, which was after I made my October TBR, I found this beautiful book, The Book of Night by Holly Black, and I had to buy it. And after I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue The School for Good and Evil, uh, but then I, I plowed through this book and I was like in a really good reading mood and I didn't have that much time to finish reading a book. There was only a week left in October and I didn't want to pick up one of the other books that I had on my TBR because they were bigger and this book was smaller. So I was like, okay, I'll read this book, even though it wasn't on my TBR, because I think this book is, um, is spooky. It wasn't spooky. <laughs> there was aspects of it that I guess the idea of is kind of creepy. Um, but I wouldn't call this, like, a Halloween-y type read. So I kind of, like, went off my theme accidentally. But I'm still really glad that I read this. So that's good. So The Book of Night is about a world where people can control their shadows. And not everybody can control their shadows, only some people can. And people who can control their shadows have a name for them. I forget what it is at this point. I forget what they're called, but there, there's a name for people who can control their shadows. And if your shadow is starting to become like alive in its own way, it's called a quickening shadow. So if you have a quickening shadow, then you know that you will probably be able to control it at some point. And you can, like, steal other people's shadows and sew them onto you so that you have somebody else's shadow. And you can, like, get your shadow to do things for you. And you can, like, see what you're seeing and what your shadow is seeing. You're, like, mind melding. It's, like, su such an interesting concept. I really liked the concept of this. So that's basically what the premise of the world is. And it's about a girl named Charlie who's always been, like, a thief and a con artist, basically, ever since she was a little kid. And she's just gotten out of it now. She's just trying to settle down with her boyfriend and her sister and, you know, stay out of trouble. Her boyfriend, who, by the way, doesn't have a shadow and won't tell her why he doesn't have a shadow, what's going on in his past. And that's like a mysterious part of the story. And then she ends up kind of like accidentally getting back into like the thievery stuff that she was into when she was younger. And there's a lot of stuff involving shadows and if she maybe has a quickening shadow that she could possibly control in the future. And I really liked it. It was really good. I, it was a little slow moving. So here's the thing. This was 300 pages. This is like a small ish book. And it felt like a longer book. And it was, it took me forever to read. Like I would sit in my chair and read for two hours and I'd read 60 pages. Like it was, <laughs> it was such a slow read, but it, uh, but not in like a bad way. I mean, kind of, it was, it was so, it was just weird. Having a story that I liked and was interested in and was short, but took me forever to read. Like, and it's not that I didn't want to pick it up because I didn't find it interesting. Just sitting down and reading the pages took a long time. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But I really liked it. I liked the atmosphere. I liked the concept. I liked the characters. Um, I was really interested in her boyfriend, Vince. Uh, I really, really liked the backstory when she was a kid. I will read the second one when it comes out. Um, I feel like 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the people who didn't like this book were really just expecting it to be an adult version of The Folk of the Year. Like, they were just expecting it to be adult Cruel Prince, which is not... And Cruel Prince is not the only series Holly Black has written. I don't think is even her best series. She has other series that are completely different. Um, And even I've read some reviews where people are like, this is not like her typical fairy story. Like she doesn't only write, fa- this isn't her first time writing something that's not about fairies. <laughs> um, So you should read more Holly Black books because they're fantastic. Way better than The Cruel Prince. Way better. Like, I understand that The Cruel Prince is her series that, like, got really popular and took off, but she's got some other books that deserve some love. Um, And I'm really sorry to the people who didn't like this, but I, I mean, it is, it is a slower story, and I did feel like, um, the concept took me a little, a while to grasp, but at the same time, it didn't feel like I was, like, that's what happens in, in in fantasy stories. Like, you just grasp the concept as you read through context, right? And it did take me a little while to fully understand, but, like, by the end of it, I absolutely knew. I understood everything. So, um, anyway, people who didn't like that, I'm really sorry. And I'm really sorry that you were disappointed because I know a lot of people were really excited for it and a lot of people were disappointed by it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And the thing that's interesting about this, too, is this story, I feel like, was pretty out of my comfort zone. Like, the, not necessarily the storytelling, but what the story was about and what it revolved around, how it was, like, this darker, grittier um, crime stuff is not something that I normally gravitate towards. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to grasp. It's hard for me to find it interesting. Uh, but I really liked it in this. Um, so that's good. So anyway, that was my October wrap-up. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Have a good day.